RV engineer here today. Today we're going to be talking about one of the more important things to do on the Grand Design, and that's properly greasing our suspension here. So mine came with the upgraded Dexter suspension that I think they switched over to in about 2020. Uh, but unfortunately from the factory it looked like these came with a lot of grease in them But when I actually put the grease gun to it It was taking me between two and eight pumps to push grease through these I mean these zerks were really coated in grease But it didn't seem like they actually got a whole lot into the bolt, the wet bolts themselves So a couple things about this I've got mine leveled right now so you can actually see that my rear wheels here are actually above the ground right now. That makes it a little easier to push grease through these. If you don't have a good grease gun, you may not be able to actually pump any grease through these at all. I ended up having to upgrade my grease gun right here. This company is not paying me a dime, but I will say that I'm pretty impressed with the build quality of it. This lock and lube right here. A lot of people just buy this adapter and then put it on their standard grease gun. I decided to go for the whole kit because I was a little worried about um, kind of a cheapy grease gun anyway. So with this one, your suspension doesn't have to be off the ground, but the way these bolts are designed is a tube with just two pinholes inside of them. So depending on if all the weight of your suspension is sitting right where that one little hole is at, you may not be able to push the grease through. The thing I like about this is on the lock and loop is that these teeth come out right here and they actually pull it right onto the Zerk. And so far I haven't had any issues at all with this breaking off, especially on this Dexter system, because you've got the real easy obvious Zerks right here, but then you've also got one on the inside here. And if you can't get a good bite on that, Potentially, you're just going to end up squirting grease everywhere. So again, with this system, it's pretty easy. You can just kind of get near the Zerk and it bites right down on it. And then what you want to do is start pumping. You can see two. Keep in mind, I've done this before. You're supposed to do this, you know, with, uh, I think like every 2,500 miles or so. And there we go. Hey, now I'm able to actually talk to you and think a little bit in a little more comfortable position. And one thing I didn't quite get right underneath was that Dexter recommends that you grease your wet bolts and your hanger every 3,000 miles or every three months. Sorry, I couldn't think of that while I was lying on my back. And one other key point, as I was doing all of them, any grease gun you get, you want to make sure it has a decent length hose on it. And the reason is it's not a whole lot of fun moving around on your back underneath there. And if you have a real short hose, it makes it even tougher to get a bite onto those Zerks. So even if you don't go with the lock and lube, definitely take a look at how long is the hose that's coming on your grease gun. Now we'll cut back underneath to me, back underneath the camper. And there we go. Now I've got grease squirting out the top right there. So that's how I know that I've pumped new grease into the system as we had that grease come out up top. And when I pull off, there should be a little bit of grease there, but it shouldn't look like what it did from the factory where this was like a big old glob and I had to clean it off before I could even see where the Zerk was. Again, next one, you can bite right onto it here. Pull it right into it. One, two, I can hear it. There we go, it's actually popping out on the other side, up top there. But that's how I know that I've pumped enough grease into there. And again, it pops right off. And then this next one, we won't be able to show it to you on the camera, but it's up here. And again, if you don't have one of these good adapters to kind of lock onto there, that may be a real hard angle for somebody to get. And this one, as I pump it through, I can actually already see it coming out between here. So this might be one that tricks some people. They might be pumping and pumping and saying, I'm not seeing any grease mine it's actually pushing it through kind of in between the two inside of there so again we can release off of there switch over to this side just give it a little jiggle there and the teeth kind of bite it in and there you go i see the grease pumping out right through there so this is what I would expect, you know, around two pumps or something to see some grease. But like I say, when this thing was brand new and I wrote on the forums that it didn't seem like they were getting a ton of grease from the factory, I got a little nervous and it was taking me like up to eight pumps. I think that one took three there and we got clean looking grease going through there. So I'm going to repeat this against all these. Of course, you got the left hand side, you got the right hand side. You've only got singles back here, doubles here. Don't forget about the inner one. 
doubles and then a single again and then you should be good to go on your next trip uh, I th also think it's a lot easier to get underneath here with like a, a, a creeper or like a roller or something rolling around on your back this is not the most fun thing to do but it is necessary if you don't want to do it yourself definitely pay somebody to do it because if these things run dry then you could potentially be looking at a uh, unplanned repair on the road you definitely want to keep these things greased so they can work properly and on your suspension will last for years if you got any comments feel free to add them below uh, if you have any other questions feel free to hit me up again i'm using the lock and lube they aren't paying me anything to say that but i actually do like their product it seems to work really well in trying to get into some of these difficult situations especially where you need to put a lot of pressure through the system again rv engineer here thanks for watching